second congressional district. And who of us are in the CD2? Raise our hands. Okay. Okay, Congressman Larson. Thanks. Hold your applause, please. It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard, you've heard that joke before, yeah. Carol Knight, that's right. There we go. Um, so, uh, thanks for uh, a chance to say hello, um, Monica, and just a heads up. Uh, I do have time for Q&A, so if you got questions, uh, you, uh, you can prepare those. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to moderate the questions. You'll, you'll, yeah, I'll just let like say you'll, you'll call yeah. people, yeah, so I won't have to um, pick and choose unless I'll let you make those decisions. <laughs> so, so here, I, I have two agendas uh, tonight. One is to uh, give you a flavor of what I'll be working on this year uh, in Congress uh, for uh, the second congressional district. Uh, and the second is to talk about the election uh, this year and how we are looking at the election nationally and what, we, what it means locally. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, and then, I, then I'll uh, maybe, maybe a third agenda, I'll just give you a flavor of impeachment. Um, yes. But uh, uh, so the, the first thing I want to just talk about is where uh, where I am uh, in the things I'm working on. So I'm the chair of the aviation subcommittee in Congress, and uh, I had an agenda at the beginning of last year that I wanted to work on, and we're getting to it. But obviously, that agenda was not a little bit aside by the, the, the tragedies of two airplane uh, crashes that killed 346 people. So we're conducting an oversight hearings right now in Congress uh, on the 737 MAX and uh, the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration's role in certification of that airplane and certification of airplanes. And uh, hopefully moving towards uh, a reform of how the United States approves the, um, the uh, certification of airplanes that fly in the United States. Uh, that takes up a lot of time. Uh, it's, it's been a critical level that we do this, and we're doing this in a subcommittee with a focus on the safety of the flying public. And uh, in, uh, with the memory of those families that uh, lost the 346 uh, uh, folks. Uh, so I uh, spent a lot of time on that. I wanted to be sure you all um, have a, uh, just know that, because there's a lot going on, a lot of things people call and write in about. Everything's important, for sure, uh, but that's something that does take a lot of time uh, in the office. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get a, a bill passed on workforce development. I think that as Democrats, uh, it's not just talking about the economy as a whole, it's talking about how we're preparing the next generation of workers to be successful in this uh, economy that is increasingly connected, increasingly global. Um, our children are not competing with uh, kids uh, in their graduating class uh, at their school. They're competing with kids in graduating classes from around the country, or from around the world. And it's important that we have an, uh, a workforce development system, both for two-year uh, community tech colleges as well as four-year, that uh, prepares kids for that. Uh, Governor Inslee has a um, career uh, connected learning uh, uh, proposal and program I'm trying to get legislation passed at the federal level up to support that kind of work that, that Jay is trying to do. I'm also on the infrastructure committee, as, as I mentioned, so we're trying to get a bill passed that will invest in the, in the in federal investment to building, maintaining, and repairing our roads, our bridges, our highways, and our transit systems in this country, as well as uh, our bike and pedestrian infrastructure, which I'm a leader on in Congress. The last time we did the transportation bill, I led the effort to ensure that we were putting federal money into our bike infrastructure and our pedestrian infrastructure, uh, so we're not just dependent upon roads and roads and highways. Uh, so uh, between infrastructure and workforce development and the aviation subcommittee, there are some other things going on as well. We passed HR1 last year. HR1 is a bill uh, that the Democrats promised that we would pass the For the People Act. A key part of that bill is on voting rights. It is on protecting the voting rights of Americans, of all Americans. It is on ensuring that access to the ballot box is primary. It is uh, focused on ensuring that states do not put up hurdles to access to that ballot box. This is the fight that I didn't think in 2020 I would be fighting. Uh, we passed the 1965 Voting Rights Act. 
in order to ensure access to the ballot box, made some, cha made some very important changes, and now, um, many years later, uh, we are still fighting for voting rights for all Americans. So that fight that started in the 60s, actually, or much earlier than that, continues on today, and it is one of those, um, uh, one of those legacies of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Um, to continue to fight for voting rights and access to the ballot box for all, uh, for all Americans. We do pretty well in our state, although we have our own challenges. Obviously, we do better than other states, uh, but the federal government has a role in enforcing and ensuring access to the ballot box. So that's another uh, issue we'd like to see uh, passed, uh, another set of bills I'd like to see passed this year. And fi I'll just uh, finally end on climate change. Climate change is real. Humans cause it. We need to act on it. Uh, we're doing a variety of things to act on it. I still think um, thinking globally and acting locally is extremely important. Being on the Transportation Committee and helping um, uh, helping transit agencies in my district electrify their bus fleets, as a for instance, um, walking transit, uh, Everett Transit, uh, maybe even Island Transit, uh, looking to electrify their bus fleets. Uh, that's just one thing that I'm doing. I'm also looking to pass legislation and funding that will support the ORCA recovery here in the Puget Sound. And uh, so that's a, uh, um, uh, something I'll be spending quite a bit of time on as well. Now let me um, flip here, switch gears a little bit, talk about the election this year. Uh, quickly in mind, of course, I'm running for the election. I'll be back to ask for the endorsement of the first LD at some point in the future when, when you're prepared for that. But we are uh, in a position in the U.S. House of Representatives to uh, re-elect uh, the 41 uh, freshmen that we got elected in 2018, which delivered the majority and put Democrats in the majority. And if you don't think that was a big deal, think about what the country would be like right now if we didn't win, the, if we had won the majority in 2018. That this president is, is practically unchained. Um, think of how he would be unchanged if we weren't there to push back against this, against this president and against the Senate. Because of things that we've already passed, we've put, passed 400 bills over the Senate. Um, they're not all dead. We've got a whole other year to get some of these things passed. But we need, to keep, we need to pass things in the House so we can put them in the Senate to get a chance to make them real. And that's one issue we're going to work on, the do, uh, a run on, is the fact that we've done all this legislation in the Senate and they haven't touched on it. They haven't, they, haven't, they haven't moved on at all. They haven't touched it at all. That's, that's an issue, but we're going to have to support these 41 uh, Democrats. We want to look at expanding our majority in the House of Representatives. We need to focus on the U.S. Senate and winning those states so that we can win to get the majority in the Senate as well. And at some point, hopefully by the time we get to Milwaukee, we'll have a Democratic candidate for president. That uh, We'll certainly have one at some point, but to run against this president. There's a lot of work we have to do this year, and it's already started. Uh, if you haven't started, you need to find out what you can do to get, uh, climb on uh, a bandwagon because it has already started around the country and in Washington State. Finally, let me touch on impeachment. I was the first member of the Washington State delegation to come out for impeachment. Others have come out. Others have come out for an impeachment inquiry. I said, no, I'm on the I'm on the super fast train. You guys can take the bus. That's fine. I'm already there on impeachment. Uh, we need to impeach this president. I voted for the two articles of impeachment, um, and of course, the vote the last this last week on the, uh, on the impeachment managers to deliver those uh, articles to the to the Senate. Now, I have to tell you, I don't have high expectations for this United States Senate to actually convict the president, but I do know this that nothing can change the fact that this president is impeached. Yeah. It means something that the U.S. House stood up to impeach this president on two counts, obstruction of Congress, which is a, an article in the, uh, in the Nixon impeachment, and abuse of power, which is an article in the Nixon impeachment article, even though he wasn't impeached, he resigned before that. So uh, clearly we have a precedent. We certainly have the evidence on our side uh, unfortunately, I don't think we have a Senate who's willing to listen to that evidence. But that doesn't change that fact that the president's been impeached. So there's a lot going on uh, this fall, uh, this, this year, um, this winter and spring and summer and into the fall. I'll be doing my work. I'll be back campaigning as well. I've got two folks here 
Jack Wellman, my field director uh, for the uh, for the uh, district as a whole, and Kevin was sitting right behind. And now Kevin <laughs> Kevin Van is the field director for uh, Snohomish County, uh, so uh, as well. So we'll be um, we'll be. I don't want you to be sick of me, but we'll be around a lot, <laughs> helping candidates um, get elected. You're sick of me for other reasons. I got it. Um, helping candidates get elected. Um, uh, um, helping the parties help those candidates as well, and uh, stand ready to help. So with that, uh, thanks, so, thanks a lot for a chance to come get you updated. Appreciate it. Two, two great ideas, I don't know if you heard that. Uh, one is um, uh, bus fleets at school districts as well as uh, government buildings uh, um, to basically take them off their, um, well, I don't know if you think take them off their grid, but certainly enhancing the use of solar power or renewable energy to, to um, uh, power those buildings, government buildings. Um, two great ideas, and I think um, I'll look into the GSA, the government building one. School districts, when we've looked at that, there is legislation to help school districts make that transition. Uh, it is a, a matter, like anything, it's only money. Um, it's a matter of cost for school districts and trying to, a public transit agency's job is in fact to move uh, people in transit. A school district's job is not primarily transportation and transit, uh, it's educating your kids. And so that's a, there's a cost issue that, that they have to make some other choices, but helping them with federal money is something I certainly support. And, and those two ideas, it really sort of underscores the broader issue. To address the goals of climate, uh, of dealing with climate change and combating climate change, it is not one bill that does it. It is a raft of bills. Um, I have, uh, we didn't bring tonight, but um, uh, if you want, if you don't like official, on the official side, not the campaign side, on the official side, we have um, a list of uh, bills uh, and projects that I am working on to implement a broad-based approach to climate change. And uh, the two ideas you bring up, we'll look further into those as well. Uh, there was a hand over here. Nancy. Hi, Congressman. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that HR1 clearly states that coding is not right. And do you think, I'm assuming it does. I haven't read it. The Constitution and President already does that, but I'll, I'll, yes, I'll, 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 but I'll double check that. Yeah. Need it to be more. Yeah. Yeah. Is it your question? Is it your question? Yeah, I'm just wondering if oh. it's clearly stated in HR one that, that voting. Is I yeah. So the question is, uh, uh, does HR one clearly state that voting is a right? I'd have to look at the language. I don't. I don't know. But precedent um, does state since after the Civil War that. That voting is a Some right. people question whether it's stated clearly. Some people yeah. question a lot of so things about the Constitution and we elect the president. So. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree. Voting, well, I'll just, not I, believe, I believe voting is a right. It is not a privilege. I, I and, and I want, I I want more people to know. exercise that right um, yeah. uh, freely and without, uh, without hurdles. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but let me. Um, let me let me look into that. I would also note uh, one bill that I'll be working on, and just reminded me for some reason it reminded me. It's HR three, which is the Lowering Drug Cost Act, which is a, a bill to give Medicare the ability to negotiate uh, drug prices like the VA has, and it will do a variety of other things, including not just deal with drug prices in Medicare, but in all of healthcare. And uh, uh, breaking news: Republicans didn't support it. Uh, <laughs> And the president says he talks a good game on controlling prescription drug prices, and then he folds like his hands when it comes time to doing something. So I think that's one issue. If we don't get passed, if we don't get it out of the Senate, that will be a big issue this fall as well. And then Marshall. Hi, uh, Evan Whip, uh, Congressman Marshall. Um, I'm a, I work at Boeing. I'm a member of SPIA. 
Great. And I wanted to ask you, uh, in, on your aviation uh, committee, what sources of information do you plan to pull in in trying to determine, uh, you know, how to uh, how to make how to make appropriate changes to the process for certification? Certain part type certification? Yeah, uh, great, great question. So we've had five hearings already. Um, uh, five oversight hearings specifically on this. So we had a, we've had a, um, one that was strictly focused on the people who fly the airplanes, uh, you know, the pilots, the people who work in the cabin, uh, the cabin crew, the flight attendants, um, uh, uh, a variety of other folks. We've had Dennis Mullenberg in before he got fired. We had him in in October. Uh, we had the FAA in, uh, the Federal Aviation Administration, in as well. We're, this is a committee investigation, so it's not just oversight hearings. Um, we have thousands of documents from Boeing that we are, and the, and the articles you read about in the paper are a result of the committee's investigation. All those emails that have come out um, talking about um, the, the, what the chief test pilot was saying several years ago, all that came out because of our investigation, mm -hmm. exposing this relationship between the FAA and Boeing and exposing uh, it, it, this crazy atmosphere within the Boeing test pilot community about how they, how they approach the MAX, the 737 MAX. Um, so thousands of documents from Boeing, not as much from the FAA, but we're still banging on the Federal Aviation Administration to release documents to the committee. Uh, and, then, and then we got three really hardworking public servants on the, on the committee staff, on the committee staff, whose sole job is to go through all this. Uh, information. They're doing a great job. Uh, they're overwhelmed by the amount of information we're getting, but as we get it and are able to synthesize it, we're um, putting it out there. Uh, and I do think it, it, it well, certainly will lead in the House to legislation that pulls back authority, some authority, no, some authority from the FAA that it currently has to delegate um, certification authority out. Um, so, it's you know, quite a number of sources. We have whistleblowers, but we're also trying not to use whistleblowers. We're actually trying to get people on the record by name. Uh, and we're doing that through interviews uh, with FAA employees and Boeing employees as well. So it's a pretty robust um, pretty robust uh, investigation. Yeah, I just, I'm one of the people who actually is a, is a delegated authority uh, at Boeing. And I think it would yeah. be great if we could pull some of the we're trying. We're trying because you work for a company that's being investigated and writing fronts for this particular issue. There's uh, legal issues that we got to uh, jump through. We don't. I, I know we're in Congress and we think we get to do anything we want. Uh, we we don't get to um, without following specific procedures and legal legal procedures as well. And we want to protect those folks too when we talk to them. We want to have them protected when we do get to interview. So but thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Marsha, a question yeah. on Craig, and I think we'll cut it. If that's okay. Otherwise, we'd we'll like, we'll love to have you. Uh, I just so I did it. Go to work on your I just did it two hours town hall earlier. So. Hi, Congressman Larson. I'm Marsha Stedman. Nice to see you again. I want to go back to impeachment because um, I would like to know is there anything the, um, that we as voters in Washington State can mm -hmm. do to move it along in the right direction? I mean, move it in a lawful direction rather than you know obfuscation continually continual continual obfuscation um, I'm getting really tired of Mitch McConnell saying the American people don't want this or want that well I, short of having a vote of everybody in the country we don't really know what the American people think at this point so what can we do to bring all that all those voices forward and make a difference well first off if, if you haven't please be sure Senators Murray and Cantwell know that you have their back mm -hmm. okay. mm. if you haven't done that already yes i'm sure you agree with senators Marie and cantwell on impeachment on the positions they're taking on witnesses and so on it is really great to hear from constituents even those who agree with you so that so that you know you know that people are behind you at home because um, they're going to be out there six days a week and so just making sure that they know you're with them it's going to be, it's going to be really, really, really great for them. Um, it'll give them, you know, I, I don't know if it's possible to give Patty and Maria more courage. They just, it just, it just, you know, it just spills out of them. 
But if it's possible to do that, <laughs> please do that. Um, that's, that's first. Second is Mitch McConnell, sadly, is not going to listen to the people of the first legislative district of Washington State. <laughs> Or to the second, or of the second congressional district of Washington State. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to listen to anybody. Or Kentucky, uh, for that frankly. matter. Or Kentucky. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm not sure he's listening to Kentucky. But I think it's, I think here's the thing: if, if perhaps the focus on McConnell is the wrong focus, there are. Four or five seats that we need, Senate seats that we need to win to get the majority. In Colorado, Maine, North Carolina, Arizona, uh, Georgia, maybe Georgia, I think. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, Iowa. Iowa, keep Alabama, right? The keep those again? Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll know it all. The Republican senators in those seats need to understand that all of America is watching them. Mm -hmm. Now, the people in their states vote, but there's a lot of people around the country who are very interested in the outcome of what those senators are doing. And you can get involved in those seats, in those races, this fall. The point is, the point is that um, uh, politics can play a role. They, they do need to feel the pressure uh, about how they're going to be voting on witnesses, how they're going to be voting on testimony, how they're going to be voting on impeachment itself. Uh, I don't know if it'll change it all, but it certainly for, will force them to defend themselves better this fall. Can you give those states names again? <laughs> I'll pass it on. Actually, it's in the middle, it'll be in the minutes. That's no, the <laughs> Nobody reads the minutes. This is going on our YouTube later. On the YouTube, okay. So, Craig Dubler, uh, again, thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a Boeing retiree, former full technical fellow at the company. Uh, as your investigation uncovers more, and there's a lot more to uncover, and you discover just how corrupt the leadership became after the merger, uh, will your committee, and it probably won't be this year, but will your committee be able to do anything to uh, forcibly shake that company out? Well, let, let, let's be clear about this. Uh, so the question is, through our investigation, will our committee force, F, be able to force Boeing to shake the company out? Let's be clear what our responsibility is. We're not doing a criminal investigation or a civil investigation. The uh, uh, Department of Justice is. Okay. There are also um, there are mul a multitude of lawsuits filed by families against Boeing for responsibility. We're in on the uh, I'm in the legislative branch. We are looking at what changes we can make to the law to ensure that the FAA uh, does its job to ensure that planes that fly in the United States, or, and because we are the United States. They, they end up flying around the world, but the standards we have are, are the standards that, set, that are set for the rest of the world and planes are safe. So we don't have that, that specific task or role for that matter. Constitutionally, we don't have that specific role. But having said that, the information that we get from Boeing, from the FAA, that we make public, some of that will be used to change the law. Some of that will be used to change public public opinion, and some of that may in fact be used by um, folks who want to hold Boeing or individuals accountable in the, in the courts. Uh, but but again, we have to play our constitutional role, uh, and because uh, we don't have authority beyond beyond that. Having said that, we got a lot of authority in the Constitution. Um, I think uh, if I could just. Maybe on, on that uh, point and, and then wrap up. What I find in, in talking with uh, the women and men who work at Boeing is a couple of things. One is they're very proud of this airplane, actually, because they're, they're proud of the work that they do. They're proud of their ability to design and make airplanes. 
Um, and that pride is, is being shaken by a lack of corporate leadership. Uh, and um, maybe maybe with the change at the top, that's going to change. Maybe, but that's going to be that's going to have to be a Boeing thing in the relationship with employees and employees' relationship with with the leadership. So that's first. Um, second, I would say for all that pride, um, you know, these folks are really they're frustrated and upset too that a product product they made resulted in a, a contributed contributed to the deaths of 346 people. And they don't feel like they're getting being backed up by that. So uh, by, by, by Boeing's leadership. And finally, the third thing is that I'm talking with uh, women and men there. It's like they got hired, they believe they got hired by a company that's an engineering company and discovered they woke up one day, discovered they worked for a financial services company. And that's not the company that, that's not the company they signed up to work for. And that's gotta change. And hopefully with this new leadership, it will change, but I don't control that, but I certainly control what I can say as a leader in the community about that. Legislation could enable a repeat of what Truman did with steel. Peace. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, uh, look, 2020 is here. It was here 20 days ago. And we gotta, you know, you gotta be, I want you to be up on the issues. I want you to be, I want you to get those, um, Texting fingers ready, those phone call fingers ready, those door knocking fingers ready. Buy it, you know, get a good set of walking shoes. Um, get ready because uh, you know the debate about the presidential race is important. The debate about issues is important. In the end, it's turning people off. It always is. It has been. It will be tomorrow. It is now. And I rely on the local Democratic parties to produce those volunteers for me and for many others to turn people out to vote. And, that, and, and we all as electeds and candidates uh, need you for that. And uh, I really appreciate the chance here to give that message to you. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Um, the bad news is um, our